is fluent in four languages. However, he expresses himself the best while speaking about digital transformation and new business models. We present to you the person in charge of Deutsche Telekom's new easy-to-partner strategy. Please, give a round of applause for Eric Mayer. Hello, Tirana! You're going to do it again? Because I was promised a marketing interactive startup audience and this is in close. Three, two, one. Hello, Tirana! That's more moves. That's more moves. That's more like it. That's more like it. So we're going to talk about three things today. Number one, there's an a, immense wave of change happening in the telecommunications industry. Number two, there's a trillion dollars marketing spend, advertising spend, moving to mobile. That's not a billion, that's not a billion, that's it. Good. Third one is that if you're large or small, it doesn't matter. What does matter? Fast, agile. And I'm going to give you an Albanian example of that one too. So let's get into this. I am at the IMD Business School. And the IMD Business School has an agreement with Cisco. It's a 10 million agreement for research. Research for what? Research for digital transformation. That means industries affected by digital and what they need to do to counter that trend. As you can see, technology, Cisco, AG Cisco, is in the middle of it. And we, telecommunications, are pretty close to it, right? So we need to come up with a plan. And that's why we closely cooperate with universities, startups, and partners like Google and Facebook to counter that trend. This morning, I got an email from a Chinese gentleman inviting me to speak in Shanghai. The first line of his email was very kind. Dear Mr. Meyer, telecommunications has failed in OTT and media. What are you going to do about it? And if you have an idea, please come and speak at our conference. <laughs> right? So very, very... And what was he referring to? He was referring to the following, what we call in the IMD Business Center value vampires. Now, the first value vampire that we were, was in the telecommunications industry, that was Skype. Now, what's a value vampire? A value vampire is a startup company or a company not from your industry taking billions of dollars out of your revenue. Remember, we had nice, fat, juicy revenues in fixed line. Nobody could beat us. And Tara, there's Skype, the largest operator in the world without any telephone line. Thank you very much. Billions of dollars gone. But that was not enough. A few years ago, there was WhatsApp. Remember those juicy, fantastic revenues on SMS and MMS and what have you? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Where are they? Gone. Gone. So we as executives need to come up with a plan. So what does this plan look like? Or more go back, the thing that needs to be recognized by executives and organizations is that something needs to be changed. But what do organizations do very good? Organizing. So if something goes wrong, what do they do? They reorganize. Is that going to help? No. Why is that not going to help? What's the key thing that we need to do is focus on the customers, please, your interactive marketeers. There's one billion at stake. Customers. So it's when you get up customers, in the evening customers, everywhere customers. Like your mind needs to be on the customer. Why does your mind need to be always obsessed with the customer? Because they change extremely fast. And mind you well, we in Europe are a bit of lagging. America is a bit faster. But who are the fastest online adapters in the world? Thank you very much. 10 points for this gentleman. The Asian communities are very fast adapters. Why is that? If you talk to an Asian group of people, what do they think of? Themselves? Mm -mm. The group. The group. So what you see here is a response of a survey going for executives, and only 25% is thinking that they really like, you know, have an answer on the disruption. That must like, you know, ring alarm bells all over the place. At Deutsche Telekom, we understood this. So there's a like, large alarm bell. We're at the 25%. Done that, tick box. So what we're doing now 
is all over strategic pillars, we're going digital. We're going all IP in the networks, virtualizing the networks. Then we go in the best customer experience, and we'll talk about that extreme, uh, in extent, and I really need your help there too. And thirdly, it's my unit, win with partners, easy to partner. So how are you going to work together with the Facebook, the Googles, the Apples of this world, and be effectively in front of the customer, not being an afterthought? And thirdly, lead in business is our business with um, like all the large brands in the world. So we have an operator called uh, Integrator, we call it Key Systems, and they, of course, work with the Nestle's and the PNGs of this world. And under that is a little line that says, encouraging leadership and performance development. All right? What does that mean? That means that we do a Magenta MOOC. Anybody knows what a MOOC is? Please shout out to me. What is a MOOC? The first massive open online course. And when we say massive, we mean massive. This is entire Deutsche Telekom from Hong Kong to Brazil who are online with 10 business mentors and you are subscribed with one of them, working with our team online. So the teams will ever ne never met. So in the first assignment of this MOOC, they got like, you know, a assignment to make. And of course, the team's very, very clever. You do the first page, I do the second page, and he'll do the third page. And we'll collide that and send it in. Done. The second assignment, though, was a business model canvas. Who knows what a business model canvas is? How many sectors does a business model canvas have? Or how many grids? Just guess. Nine, nine, or eight, fantastic, I'll go for it. But what does that mean if you're online with a team, which one is sitting in Mexico and the other one is sitting in Hong Kong, and you try to like go through eight of those squares, see where your market is, see where your competition is, see where your product needs to be, what's that gonna be? That's gonna take you an entire day. And I know conference calls are nice, but an entire day of conference call, it's just not gonna happen. So before you go into digital, you better think about the how than the what, right? How am I going to have maximal impact with organizing myself fantastically well that I can be extremely agile? Because in this matter also, size didn't matter. And I'm highly indebted to the teams because when the teams got this, they were running with it. So the analogy for a leader is you have to be a coach. What are a coach never allowed to do? Anybody ever see a coach play? This yesterday was a game on television, right? It was... Uh, Right? Great game. Did you see the coach playing? No, eh? no, we didn't see that. How many leaders are playing in your field? A lot, right? Management has the reflex to jump in and sit on your seat and excuse me, I've been in so much board meetings where the board wants to dissolve your product. Please don't. Please don't. I play, not you. Right? Very important that you give the possibilities, you give the room, the team, and the headspace, and you point out to the world where you, have, you want your team to go to play and excel, right? Very important. And here, I have to give credit to all the teams at Deutsche Telekom. Of the uh, 30 teams I started with, with eight people, 27 made it to the finish. Now, whoever made a MOOC to the end, it's under 20%, right? Good. My topic in the MOOC was micro moments. Anybody a guess what a micro moment is? Maybe some of you are having a micro moment. He is having a micro moment, that's for sure. What's a micro moment? Yeah, but have a look, you can read it. The intelligent marketeers. It's you pull your mobile phone 80 to 90 times a day and you want something of your mobile phone. So Google has come up with the concept of micro moments and they say life is not lived in hours, it's lived in micro moments. I want to go somewhere, I want to like, you know, buy somewhere, I want to talk to somebody, I want to do something. So see here, want to go, want to do, want to buy, they're all micro moments. If you're not there on that mobile phone, in that micro moment with a customer, what's going to happen? You're not going to be there, you're going to lose out. So what's happening, all the top brands are trying to get into the customer's micro moment. Whoops, 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 right? Because on the mobile phone, if you would plainly send them a advertisement, what would they do? Swipe it away, swipe it away. They're not interested. They're even, like, you know, very much annoyed by this. So you, as a marketeer, need to come up with a way to communicate with that audience in a relevant way. And I'll keep the tension going. I'll keep that for later. Now, you might ask, why is an operator good at this? Well, 
there's a little secret. We operate SIM cards. There's a little metric to be done. There are more SIM cards in the world than bank accounts and credit cards together. Again, more bank accounts than there are more SIM cards than bank account and credit cards together. What's your reaction? Oh, oh. Because what I want to do is have enough market to be relevant. Because if I have a little wallet developed by myself, I'm going to market, do you want to do my wallet, wallet, wallet? No. The important part here also is that we are perfectly set up for this because we have an identity uh, API, a location API, and a billing API. And the billing API you see here. So remember, in our juicy days, we would bill you per second. Second. Put your phone online, bam, you have a bill per second. So our billing engines were like, you know, revving a bit and over because everybody's got flat fees now. So this engine stand there in the basement going like, da -da 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 -da. there's a lot of over capacity. Now, what we've done, we've built an API on top of this, exposed it to third parties in a very secure way so that the Google Play Store can use our billing API because we can bill you for 50 cents. Now, I suggest you call your bank and your credit card company and say like, hello, I have a deal for you. I want to bill you for 50 cents. What does the credit card company say to you? Get lost. Get lost. I don't have the capacity. It's too expensive for me. Don't. We have this capacity and we're highly, highly effective in this one. So what happens is the customer, by signing up once, can click once and with that one click they can buy. So I hope at the first row you're having a micro mom that you're buying at the moment with my APIs. <laughs> I hope you're buying. Bye. So very interesting. So you have your micro moment. You look at your screen. I want that. Bang. Because you don't want to go like, I'm Eric Meyer. I'm living blah, blah, blah. Da, 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 da. Here's my credit. Like, you know, the whole credit card thing. Mm, you don't want that. You want boom, boom, boom. Now, customers are doing this in an immense way. Now, what do you think is the biggest market out there for this kind of payment? Please, your marketeers. If you would start tomorrow a business, where would it be? I got you, but what is the industry that is driving payments online like idiots? What is a very large industry, which is larger than the movie industry, the movie industry, and coming out with every year a new release or even shorter release? And a lot of guys are playing it online with their headsets. Gaming, gaming, right? It's a billion dollar industry. Uh, sorry, so I'm going to this one first. This is a 1.4 million car by Bugatti made for the PlayStation fans. This is another oh uh, moment, right? Please. Uh, get this. Bugatti builds a car for PlayStation fans in the order of 1.4 million. Why? This is the fastest road car there is, and that's why gaming guys want to drive this car in virtual environments like London, like Paris, what have you. So fans in a game called Gameloft actually for $99.99, buy a digital Ferrari. Have you ever spent $99 on a digital Ferrari? I didn't. But there's a hell of a people out there who do that. Right? Very, very interesting to watch. What was the other game that made a huge amount of revenues? What's the favorite game now? Ah, Pokemon, Pokemon. Have you ever looked at the billing capacity of Pokemon? How much can you bill in Pokemon? Your interactive marketeers, please, 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 please. Right? 99 cents to how much? $99. $99.99. Thank you very much. 10 points. So this is immense. And if you want to be a like, you know, permanent beast in a gym, you better spend 99 because otherwise you get kicked out of the gym immediately. So you want to up your, like, you know, you want to hatch your eggs, you want to find your best Pokemon. And people do this like crazy. So I was last week on a holiday on a German island doing my kite surfing or whatever, you saw it on the first slide, so I was being active. What does all the little kids do on that island? They were walking around like this, right? The parents spend every day five euros per kid, so you have two kids, five euros every day, 15 days in a row on their kids being quiet with Pokemon on the street because they think it's healthy. They're not at home with the computer, they're in the street with the computer, right? What a business model. I have created nothing. Parents go 10 euros every day for 15 days in a row. Thank you, parents. And I was like, you know, enjoying myself. Nothing, right? Yeah. So again here, have a look. This is an interactive way. We just heard it uh, from Nikolai. How do you engage your customers? What do your customers want? So gaming is one. What are the other two ones that are very big in revenues? Because gaming, sorry, I'll come back. The, the 
gaming, if you know the latest games, what are the costs of making a game like Tour of Duty? Anybody? More. More. Shout to me, shout to me in the back, come on, ladies. It was nearly 200 million. You know how much it cost a James Bond? Less. Who makes more revenue? The game. The game. Why? You have a loyal base who keeps buying, keeps buying, keeps buying, keeps buying. What do these people do? They upgrade in the game. So you have also games like Civilization. You have games like uh, SimCity, where you have to buy assets. What do these people actually do in that game? Or what is the game maker doing? What is the biggest, if you take out your iPhone, if you take out your Android, what is the business model of a gaming company? In a purchase, very good. So what is the first motivator to get into the game? Uh, 40 points, 40 points, absolutely. Yes, so what does it look like? What is happening at that moment that the, the customer is coming for free into the game? Yes, yes. So I will repeat this. It's a desire which wasn't there before. It's like French market, remember? If you go in the market here in Tirana and they offer you a very good cheese or a very good raki, you tasted it, you want the bottle, right? That's exactly what they're doing. So you digital marketeers out to the market, have a look what they're doing. Gaming one, what's another market? What are, I, I was in the um, public transport because I love to take public transport. What, 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 why do I love to take public transport? I can see my base, I can see the customer, I can feel the customer. What do executives never do? Get out on the field. So in any public transport, what is happening in any public transport? They are on their phones, all the time on their phones. They're waiting on their phones, in transit on the phones. So what do you do, want to do as a digital marketeer? This is a huge, absolutely fantastic, brilliantly fantastic micro moment because they are stuck and they want to do something. But of all, they want to get entertained. Now this is a magic moment. Remember Facebook, 25%? We really want to have fun, please, please, fun, right? So this is a very interesting moment. So the other one is gambling. I was in a public transport with a young man. He played, I think, half an hour poker by upping every time five euros. Bang, bang, bang. Right? I could, like, I could go on, please go on. What is the last category? What is the most famous category in the world where we never talk about? Sport is good? Erotics. Thank you very much, my man. Erotics. Who are the innovators? Who started first video? Erotics. Why? Because the margin is extremely high. Now, you as digital marketeers, who is the better buyer, the gentleman or the lady, and why? Please? The lady. And why is the lady the better buyer? Please. Yes, you're true. So there are more single ladies in household at the moment, so that demand is really growing. But they're very loyal. If you have won the heart of a lady, it's hard to lose it. It's hard to lose it. So if you are a quality provider, so what does lady want? Ladies want top erotics, which means a fantastic scenery with a fantastic actor, fantastic beach, and after they want to talk about it. And they spend $29.99 every month. Boom, 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 boom. The guys come by, five euros, bang, done, got it. Not good, right? So I was talking about um, local implementations. Small is beautiful. So what we do a lot is we scout for partners. And when the Albanian team came to me and said, Eric, I love that you go to Facebook. I love that you go to Spotify. I love that you go to SoundCloud. But that's five euros a shot a month and not applicable to our market. Would you have something for us that we can implement over the cloud with little integration cost and in the 150 euro range? Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Very interestingly enough, we did this in six weeks' time. This is a world record for Deutsche Telekom of integration. We signed it, we did it. Why? Because the team was very keen to get it. The supplier was very keen to get it. Marry the two together, boom. So this is really, if you're small and agile and you have an idea, go for it. Don't be behindered. And I'm like, when I was invited for speaking to this conference, talking about change, you as a country have been to an enormous amount of change in my lifetime. Right, I'm nearly entering 50. Hmm? In my country, in your country, so you really adapt to change. And you should look at like, you know, private-public partnerships 
who could jump a generation. What am I saying? When we started to drive cars, we started to clog cities. Please don't do that. So have a jump. Have a look at what people get into public transport. I was looking at Tirana. I was looking at the airport. The way from the airport into city center is about half an hour. It's ideal for a light electric railway. Absolutely ideal. You sit the people in, boof. What do you do with the taxi drivers? You retool them into like, you know, service people for that railway. If you go to a city like Lausanne, it was very beautiful, it's being clogged by cars. It was devaluing the city. Everybody who checks in at a hotel in Lausanne gets a ticket for public transport. Please stay out of a car. Now, if you look at this concept, if you look at Tirana, which are half million of, of like, you know, public, I want to challenge you, come to me with a startup, and in that startup you do ticketing. I have a ticketing provider, we can do tickets. People can buy them with one click, we're off. You have a better city, a more beautiful city, and very happy people. Because I take public transport because I can work. I went to my destiny, holiday destination in the local train. Why? It was faster than my car. I could work, I could drink, I could talk to my family. Very important, right? They don't see you too much, right? And you could relax. And I could watch my audience, right? I saw people like, what are they doing? And the car here. Um, yeah, so go back to this one. What is the largest thing happening on YouTube? So we talked about this morning about uh, Facebook. Uh, you know about Twitter. We'll talk about Twitter in a moment. What's happening on Facebook? Oh, sorry, YouTube. YouTube. I thought it was the interactive audience. Come on, come on. What are the most watched movies on YouTube? Yes, yes. So people recording themselves while playing. That PewDiePie is, is a gamer, it's been watched. Unboxing has been watched, right? So a lot of people watch each other operating with company stuff. So I'm unboxing an iPhone, I'm unboxing, what have you, my grill, I'm unboxing. And it's very funny done. Toys, yes, and the other is, I have two girls. Beauty, beauty, beauty. BB's Beauty Palace, I'm still like poor from that one. What is it doing? It's putting a personal value on a product. It's somebody being very exciting about your product. And that's what you want. So this is another message to you marketeers. The customer or the consumer is not anymore consuming, he is prosuming, or he or she is prosuming. She is part of the experience and she will enhance the experience. All right, I'll come back to that in a moment. So what we're doing here on YouTube is we have family one. Family Heinz, family Heinz in German, it's the same. So what the family is doing, it's showing how to use in a very funny way telecom product for the wider audience to understand. Because remember, I have a beautiful audience up ref. It's the silver servers. Servers. They have time. And what do they have else? Money. And we love money, right? But what they don't want is another upgrade to like, you know, a telecom service, which they don't understand. So what they really want is here, Clara, Carla, Clara is the grandmother, and she's doing in a funny way unboxing. And people love it. So this is a very nice slick phone. Right? So, so this kind of conversation. There's family here is like dad and, and teenage daughter are talking about the playlist, right? Your average normal mobile user doesn't know anything about a playlist. It's only 0. whatever percent. So this is a huge opportunity for you. Here's those um, holidays and that was like roaming, right? So you understand the concept. We even took that further. Uh, we just launched this year a complete virtual operator around FC Bayern Munich. So this football club is a huge club which has fans in the stadium twice a week. How many fans are in the stadium? Shout, please. 70,000. You are a marketeer, my man. You are a marketeer. 70,000. What is that kind of opportunity? It's for me a oh, moment, right? Huge moment. What are these fans doing before the game and after the game? Yes, sitting, wanting to entertain themselves. So they're like really in the mood to be entertained and engaged on the same experience that they all have together. Even more, they are engaging with their social, video, and mobile, that's their core like things that they want, other people outside of the stadium. And this is a huge thing because here we touch people in what they like. And any time of the day, I can come with a micro moment regarding Bayern München. They don't care. If they're showering, sleeping, they don't care. That's what they like. So if you micro moment and you're like messaging, it's in here, it's fine. 
So if you have a Fashionata group, a advertisement, say adapted of Chanel, is perfectly okay. If you have a car free group, a advertisement of Bugatti is okay. And in that you can start a dialogue, right? I'll come back to that later. Because that's what we call conversational commerce, but I'll come back to that here, actually. Uh, no, I will do that here. So 216 is a year of conversational commerce. And I'm, I'm going to slip back in my presentation, but I want you as marketing geniuses and startup genius to think about this already, right? So how am I going to converse with my peer group in that fantastic micro moment, right? Back. I need to point there. Sorry, I'm pointing the wrong way. So what's happening in Americas? Uh, I don't know if you've heard of John Ledger, Ledger, John Ledger in Americas. Who's ever heard from John Ledger? What was his famous moment from John, or famous moment that he has? Crashing a party, very good. You're an excellent researcher. And secondly, more recently, the guy with the hair, the guy with the hairdo. Remember Donald Trump? Yes, Trump, thank you very much. So what happened is that uh, Mr. Leger is on his own Twitter account, which not much executives do. And he's tweeting with the customer base all the time. He's on. Actually, on Sunday, is something called on YouTube a Sunday roast. He invites you to his home, where he's cooking in the kitchen in his magenta kit, telling you what he likes for dinner. You know how much people view that? Millions. Millions of people view John cooking. Right? What does the guy do? He went in as a challenger, like our T-Mobile business for a couple of years was totally dead, done, over. What he said is, dear customer, tell me what you want, I will do that for you. Which requires a huge change internal company, remember, for a huge effort. So what he says is to, to, the, um, to the customers, he says, if you don't like a termination fee, because if you want to get out of a two-year contract, you have in, 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 in telecom, you have a termination fee. You still need to pay the whole contract. And he said, we as T-Mobile will take your termination fee. You want a free handset? We'll arrange a free handset. You just pay more. So he went on that, started marketing, and now he's in his 13th move. What he's done in those consecutive quarters, he has added more customers than the others lost together. And we call that net ad. And that's something incredible. But that requires a, a massive amount of leadership together with motivating the team for doing a lot of extra work. So this requires that you go in as a leader, you're 24-7 available, and you guide your team. So there's no way of putting your team in front of the customer. Saying like, oh, I didn't know. Here is my customer service rep. Go figure out. There was an instance of a lady tweeting that her died husband in the war in the Middle East, she was still being charged for. He saw that on Twitter, canceled it immediately. Overruled, bang, immediately, right? The most famous one that he did was, of course, he was on his own Twitter account, and the presidential candidate, which we won't mention, didn't know this. So they went into a dogfight, and the presidential candidate was saying, like, I don't like immigrants, I want a wall around the US. You know what he did? He said, roaming for Canada and Mexico from now on is free. You know how much advertising spend that is that he just, like, you know, cashed in? That's two Super Bowls, hapla, right? And a lot of loyal customers, because he meant it. And actually, John is a Republican. Hello? Hello? Are we in the same tune? Yeah? Get this one. So you have a very authentic leader here. What happens is he's wearing, as you can see on this picture, a lot of Magenta Kid. Now we have a Love Magenta website, because people want to buy his shoes, buy his T-shirt, buy everything of him. We actually make a lot of merchandise on, on the t-shirts at the moment. So what you see here is that we can get off digital products into the physical world here, right? Very interesting to watch. So the combination of a digital good together with a physical good is extremely interesting. Why is that? Okay, marketeers, pay attention. Say I want to sell you a soft drink. Are we in the room? How much is the cost of a soft drink? Shout it to me in euros. One euro, one euro, whatever. Yeah. Cost, uh, price, sorry, price, price. Abbe, you are very right on the ball because there's a cost of production. There's a cost of shipment. There's the cost of refreshing. There's the cost of taking back excess capacity. So what's your margin on the end? Very low. What do you think my margin is? I have a digital product. I only have to make product one, and the other ones are copy, 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 copy. What is my cost of delivery? You're pulling it out of my hands. Thank you very much. Right? So if you are 
a global brand of a soft drink or a food supplier, what do you want to do? What's your opportunity here? Yes, are the big companies. But what is my opportunity? How much food can I eat a day? I'm a two meal guy, so sorry about that. How many times can I pay Candy Crush a day? 100 times, I won't get bored. So if you see the spend on digital versus the spend on physical, there is a larger digital opportunity for established brands in the digital area. And you as startups and marketeers are now looking at a huge opportunity. Ah, uh, right. This is the one. So uh, we just touched on it. Um, we talked about Europe. We talked about Deutsche Telekom. We talked about um, America. This is Asia. Attention, attention, all personnel. What's this? This is WeChat. So have a look at the L2 Inc. company. Scott, CEO, is doing a weekly video. If you haven't seen it, Scott Galloway. If you're a marketeer, you haven't seen Scott Galloway. I would go for a look at What's happening here is this, this is the research from L2. What's happening is they say they see all kinds of applications merging into WeChat. Which, ha which happens that, that they don't go off base anymore. Those customers stay in their messenger. Why do they stay there? It's called app fatigue. App fatigue. So I don't know about your iPhone, but my iPhone is just screens and screens and screens. And if you have to search for an app in a micro moment to do something, the opportunity is already gone. So here you have the chatbot from Mike this morning, who sees you on Facebook, kabang, 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 right? Very interesting. Even this is so weird that you can get a $30,000 loan on your messenger. If you board a taxi in the middle of China, I was last month in Yinchuan, the taxi driver drives an old VW, but his mobile phone is much more performant than mine. He's got WeChat on it. And he's looking extremely disappointed if you don't want to pay digital, because he doesn't want a currency. Why? It's more safer for him. He can immediately spend it again. There's also the Amazon of China is on there, JD.com. How many customers does JD.com reach? Approximately, please. Come on, guys, marketeers. 800 million. What's that again? <gasps> How many customers do we have in Europe? You do the math, right? So what you see here is that the Chinese don't even care about Europe and America. They go like, go figure. <laughs> we got our own market, right? And it's multidisciplinary, multidisciplinary. So this is what we call conversational commerce. So in 216, I want you to think about, for me, conversations that you have with your clients in marketing, in startup, that we can help you with with my APIs. Remember, payment API, location API, identity API. I can do a lot for you on mobile. So for the group that I'm working at, eCompany, we do exactly the same at the moment. So we have a recommendation app called Top Apps, and we help our customers find education app, music apps, and we help them browsing the world of like, you know, digital opportunities. We have every week a mega deal, and at the right, there's top apps. So every time we're contacting whether you're just going to get a like, service from us, and two years later, we'll see you back. No, we're every week, and we're monitoring that with a digital dashboard very carefully. So we know if you call the call center what you, what you want to do, right? And we are in constant dialogue. If you don't like it, we're online. We, we can figure it out. This morning, Mike talked about AI. It was a very like futuristic presentation. This is, this is the world. But he also said, like, it's happening now. And bet you is it's happening now. So I don't know if you do that a lot, but take out your iPhone, your Android, what have you, start talking to it. Right? Start talking to it. Because you will see that this application can actually answer questions which are complex questions. If you pull out now your Google phone, you can ask your Google phone, who is the president of America? And we'll give you the right answer. That is not an easy search. So what's happening in our customer services, and this is a trial what we do in uh, T-Mobile Austria, is we put Tinka in front of you. Now, Tinka is also a very playful element. What is the most question asked from Tinka? How old are you? Which color of eyes do you have? They start to play with it. Remember Siri, the maddest question you can ask for Siri? So people like the playlist of this. So we are looking with our partners into how can we make customer service more effective? Because this is the 80-20 rule. 80% 80 of the customers really want 20% of the things that we serve every time the same problem. But if you're a human assistant at the other time, after 35 times answering that is not the television, not the box, but the television that you just bought, it gets very boring. 
So what we can do here is we can, in a very playful way, if you're a sports guy, you could say, for example, ask Cristiano Ronaldo to lend his voice. So you would be answered by, as a sports guy, you would love this. As a fashionata guy, it could be Karl Lagerfeld. As a car guy, it could be like, you know, uh, one of the Formula One drivers who answers your questions. And it becomes much more playful. It becomes much more interesting. And it like re-engages people in a playful way. Last thing that I want to give you on your road is in a normal call, we vote a configure price quote. Means customer calls, I do two or three products, I give them a price, and then I give them the rebate on the customer loyalty basis. You get this? We have products, we configure products, we do a pricing, and we give a rebate if you're a loyal customer, new customer, what have you. This is a complex process. For two or three products, it takes a long time. The assistant can actually bundle in 150 a euro because the assistant is much faster and looking through all those possibilities and is never tired of answering your question. The interesting part that we have here is we don't have any unemployment at all because that customer service center starts to like, you know, um, serve a whopping amount of more customers in a very much better way because the human agents start to feed Tinka with the patterns that people ask. So we feed Tinka with the call patterns that people have, right? Now, my dream is, of course, to get in one of your companies in my call center and sell one or two of my seats to your company, which means that if somebody has a problem with a television or not securing their voucher on their mobile phone, who are they going to call? Yeah, not I think I, but also me. The first reflex is, oh, my television doesn't work. That must be the receiver. No, it's the new television you bought. My mobile phone is not working. The voucher is not working. It's, it's the mobile phone company. No, it is actually the voucher company not being able to get their, to their server. But they usually reflect, they see a number and bang. Because we are the only people reachable. Remember the over the tops? Try to call Amazon. Good luck. Right? So this is the fun part that I want to have my call center seats rebranded into your brand where we serve customers in this very interactive way, combining more products than that only standalone product. So the customer will never go for that standalone product, but the bundle is extremely interesting. Then again, I want to pull this larger, because this is not only a, a Dutch Telecom play. What we do in the telecom industry is we have the TM form, the telecom management form, and we meet in places like Singapore, in Nice, all over the world, in the Americas. And what we do is we do catalysts. So we invite innovative companies to pitch to the uh, World Forum, and then we do with two or three operators, we do a catalyst. What is the effect of a catalyst? A catalyst in nature is you start a catalyst, and it never ends, because it doesn't burn its own fuel. It keeps going, right? So this is a very interesting way of suppliers, innovators, and global telephone companies to work together in a very effective way to test things out with loyal audiences. So I would urge you to take a look at it. If you have ideas, I'm all ears. So there you're not locked into any operator. We do this like also in the GSMA. We do this like industry-wide. So I'm concluding with my statement. If you haven't woken up by now, I'm sorry. Can't do better. We have an immense like amount of change going on. So telecom companies are moving from product to customer, and they're moving to your customer. Um, they do that in a micro moment. We do this in a B2B business model, and we do that executing conversational commerce. So I really look forward to your ideas. And again, I'm impressed and humbled to be here. I think you as a country have been to a fantastic amount of change. If you are nimble and fast, remember your colleagues, it will go. Thank you very much. See you again.